now. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PrinterCast. Yes, yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Don Gosher. How well did that go down? We can talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at printermedia.tv. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's PrinterCast with me, Dom Goucher, and uh, him, Pete Williams. Hey, hey. Another exciting week for me, on topic-wise... Uh, after my own so- rant and soapbox, uh, followed by your rant and soapbox, uh, it's now my my expert subject this week. It's a little video. Video, indeed. We'll get into that in a second. But, uh, how are things? Things are good. You know, another busy week uh, in the, the Pete Williams world, which is nice. Um, sort of put a bit of focus back on the blog, which has been nice. So there's that the interview um, that we spoke about last week with Tony, the author of. Uh, Creating Innovators, which is available uh, on the blog, which is cool, and actually have a few more blog posts scheduled, one to go out tomorrow and next few days. So uh, sort of, you know, a bit more attention back over there at preneurmarketing.com. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, listeners, go and check that out. There's plenty of back catalogue articles and thoughts and case studies and things like that that are available there to read and, and you know, share and um, my audio book, um, actually, let's mention that actually, the audio book um, for my very first uh, book that I had published, How to Turn Your Million Dollar Idea into a Reality, um, is actually going to be on Audible very soon, which is very, very cool. Ooh. But, but, there is a bit of a but. The downside is that I have to pull the book from being free. So right now, if you head over to preneurmarketing.com, you can actually uh, subscribe and you get a free audio version of the book, which will no longer be free very shortly because Audible are making me pull it down because they don't want to compete with free, which is uh, sort of understandable. So if you want to get a copy of that before it disappears, uh, make sure you go and and grab that uh, shortly. Now, in terms of when it's going down... I don't know. It might be down by the time you listen to this. It might not be. Uh, so go and check it out. Um, we're just still finalizing that. I'm guessing two weeks, but I could be out by a day or a week or whatever. So um, it is coming down at some stage uh, as we get and finalize this Audible uh, deal around the, the first audio book. That's, uh, that's very exciting listed on Audible. But uh, for, for those action takers out there, definitely get over to preneurmarketing.com and uh, pop your email in the sign-up box that's all over that site. Uh, and not only will you get Pete's audiobook for free, if you do it quickly, but uh, there's a lot of other cool stuff that you'll get signed up to uh, if you're on Pete's mailing list. Yeah. Uh, I'm on it, because I get I get to... <laughs> I, I like giving reduction. Pete's updates. Blue. Yeah, for example, noise reduction, which uh, still saves me hours and hours and hours of trolling around every week. So that's great. Um... So, moving on, uh, talking about sponsors, we briefly mentioned Audible there, but uh, linking together our show topic this week of video, and uh, our other sponsor, Read It For Me, um, just wanted to flag this, uh, again, don't want to go big official message stuff on the sponsorship, but uh, a big part of the Read It For Me book review service, uh, and one of the reasons we really like it, is the multimedia nature of their book reviews and a big 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 part of that is a video that they produce for every book that they review Um, and I think that is a great example of the power of video and where video is really really useful for conveying information if you're the person producing it and for consuming it if you're the person consuming it Um, and those are topics that we're going to pick up uh, in this show. So uh, if you're interested in the book review service, read it for me, pop over to readitfor.me forward slash preneurcast and uh, you'll get a discount off your membership. You'll also see a little video there of me and Pete going through the membership area so you can get an example of how Read It For Me use video in their reviews. Well, I think that's a very, sorry, I'm going to jump in there. I think it's a very good point to sort of talk about is that they've got two different types of videos um, that you can, you can see. You can obviously have the the um, screen flow type video which is that over the shoulder look inside the membership area which is a very very easy and quick way to create video but then they've also gone to the path of actually creating some high quality content in there too so um, they use video very very well and there's two examples of how you can use it cool very very good point uh, and again points i'm going to pick up on in a little bit 
as we go on and talk. Just one thing I wanted to point out, actually. I've just recently noticed a change with our sponsor that read it for me on their site. Uh, their slogan used to be, learn faster, go further, didn't it? I, I do believe so, and it, it, it has changed uh, recently. It, it has. It has. Into something that sounded awfully familiar. It's now effective and engaging book summaries. I'm sure I've, I've heard, heard that, that somewhere. somewhere before. I'm sure some really yeah. intelligent people use that as the description of their service on numerous written and verbal internet platform show things. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I, 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 I'd go as far as to say that we're becoming thought leaders, Peter. In many places. You know, there's been... In many Dale's places. been known to talk about stuff after we've talked about it on the show. Read It For Me's now uh, utilising... We should, we should start charging to get people to listen to this show because they're uh, taking action. They're making money off it and using stuff. Well, I don't think we're going to charge for the show, but I do think it's in, in all seriousness that I'm. It, it's great to see people taking action on what on what we do talk about, and a little bit of a, a poke and a prod there to read it for me because we love Steve and the guys over there. Um, but it, it is great to see people take action on the stuff and get feedback, uh, as we always ask people to do. Let us know how you're getting on, and again, some great emails this week from people. Thank you to everybody who's got in touch uh, and had a chat. So let's get into the show. Let's get let's get onto uh, onto video um, because there's just everybody everybody I say everybody in inverted commas the, uh, the 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 people who market via the internet and market information products are have been slowly swinging around to video for the last couple of years. And 2012 seems to be the year where everybody is telling everybody else that they should be doing video. Now this is harks back to last week's show about internet and marketing myths um you should be doing this as we talked about last week we did um we did now as 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 we've talked about uh, you know on and off in this show m- one of my main business businesses is media production and a very big part of that is producing video for my clients lots of different kinds of video so it seems like a, a good opportunity for me to uh, to address the myth of you should be doing video and what's it all about now i i'm a big fan of video i was always a big fan of video even before i was producing it for for myself and for other people um but you do have to evaluate is it right for you why are you doing it just as we said in the podcast and and one of the reasons why video is very, very powerful is that communication, as we talked about with Read It For Me. Um, it's a fantastic medium for communicating an awful lot of information in one go. You can compress what would be a multiple page long sales letter into a video that people don't have to scroll through. They progress through it in the order you want them to go through to see the message in the order you want them to experience it. And you can convey a lot of information in that video. It'll probably take them less time to sit and watch the video than it would to sit and read through that sales letter, which, by the way, they may not read all of. Very few people ever do. Um, So that's one really good reason to use video versus text. Another one is that it gives you the opportunity to put across more of your personality. You don't actually have to be on camera, although if you're so inclined, it's a great way to get people to, to identify with you. But just having your voice there, just like we, you've got our voices on the podcast right now, uh, it's a great way to get across your personality. Um, and one other reason is that it's very, very engaging. Video is a very engaging medium. And it doesn't have to just be for sales. It can be for anything. You can be communicating with people. Um, and there's lots and lots and lots of statistics. I won't go over the statistics. I'm not a big statistics person, but there are lots of statistics out there that will tell you how much time we spend watching television, how much time we spend watching now online video. YouTube is the, the big the, the big reference for this. But we spend an awful lot of time watching video. So if you're producing the video, people will spend time engaged with your material. It's far more engaging, far easier to consume material um, by video. Obviously, it's not as flexible as audio, and we talk about Audible 
as one of our other sponsors. But you know, if people are going to engage with something, it's, it's easier for them to engage with video. So for those reasons, video is very powerful as a medium. Absolutely. But I, there's a, sorry, go ahead. Go oh, I interrupted you, Dom. You're on a fly. Keep going. No, please do. Please do, because your interruptions are already always valuable. Well, I was actually just going to sort of ask the question or also just, you know, talk about some different ways you can use video to give some examples of like, you know, not obviously it's engaging and it's powerful let, and actually sort of discuss like, you know, some different types of videos you can be doing and sort of see how they can apply in different scenarios. So if it's sort of a jump forward from where, you, where your thought pattern was going, we'll continue with where you are and we'll touch on that in the moment or we can jump straight forward to that, mate. Well, let, let's, let's take your point because it was pretty much what I was going to talk about next is, is what can you use video for? Uh, which is pretty much what you're talking about. So yeah, let's uh, let, let's talk about that. Because have, have you got something you want to? Oh look, I've, put just, in I've there? just taken some notes of just a whole bunch of different types of videos and and some examples of where they're being used on the web, so people can actually sort of you know remember they've seen it before or go and check it out and kind of hopefully spark some ideas for people of of how video can apply to them because. You know, information marketers, you know, they've sort of been exposed to all that sort of stuff and that's part of the world. But, you know, we've got a big listener base who are real-world people with real-world businesses selling real-world stuff to other real-world people. They're the, the dentist, there's the, you know, the, the retailer, you've got the masseuse, you've got the consultant, you've got real-world people thinking, well, hang on, you know, I've got an e-commerce site, how can video apply to me? And I think giving some real-world examples of, of, of effective ways to use video across these different platforms and places um, could really help spark some people thinking about, oh, that's how I can apply in, in, in my business and in my world. Absolutely. And, and you know, so, so let's, let's go with some of those. And I'm going to start real, real world. Okay. Now, before I go into this, all right, I am going to, I'm going to come back afterwards. I'm going to give everyone some examples of, of where it can work. But I'm aware of something that's there's an elephant in the room with video. In fact, there's quite a few. Okay, and I'm going to come back and talk about what these. What sort of videos are you shooting Ooh. of elephants? Aha, 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 aha. Bad joke of the week. <sighs> Got it in there. Yeah, bada bing. Um, there, there's a couple. There's a couple of elephants in the room. One of them is that it's expensive to produce video. Another one is, it's difficult to produce video. And the last one, it's getting pretty crowded in here, so I'll stop here, is that the quality of the video has to be television standard. And these are things, and hopefully that resonates with a few people that are listening, that are maybe hesitating about making video. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about these and I'm going to give you, give you some tips, give you some feedback from my experience as a professional in the industry and also give you some tips about how to overcome those issues. But let's, let's go back and let's, let's, let's carry on kind of bigging up video for a little bit um, because I'm all, I'm all about just making things easy, doing, uh, you know, as we talk about minimum viable product. What do you need to do to get the message across? So your real world, you talk about real world. Um, a great, great thing to do in the real world. Video is a great way of helping people experience something. So, for example, you are a dentist's surgery, and you want to talk, you want to promote your dentist's surgery. Um, if nobody's ever been there before, well, why not do a video tour? Why not walk around your, your surgery saying, "This is the waiting area. This is the receptionist. This is the uh, this is the, op the 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 room where the, the the actual things are taking place. This is the dental hygienist room. This, this is, is the, the drill. You know, this we is have the a happy gas. Yeah, I'd, I'd focus on the happy gas versus the drill, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, this is this is the recovery room, things like that. Just just so that people get a feeling, and it's amazing. I mean, I did this on a grander scale, a much grander scale, with um, with a local company here, uh, a dive centre. And they produced like a mini TV series. Now that was, it was quite involved, and, and I'm not suggesting anybody does get that involved. But they they have for, ever since they produced that that series of videos about their their dive centre and the boats and the staff. 
they've had the the increase in people the increase in inquiries was massive but more importantly was when people physically arrived these people are coming from the far side of the country to to, to dive in this dive center and when they arrive they already know everybody they all, they go hey you're sergi and hey you're andre and you're andy and and, and so on because they've seen them on the video they know the setup they know where they basically know where all the equipment is and you know everything they know everything that, that a prospective customer would ever want to know about the organization and they, they've come from the other side of the country and it's the first time they've got there and that is one of the, the most powerful uses of video for a bricks and mortar business yeah absolutely it's, it's, it's that sort uh, of pre-sell almost it's using it as a, as a pre-sale yeah, tool. It, yeah, it's a pre-sale tool. It's great. To, but but take that. Don't you know? Maybe maybe you are you talked about an e-commerce business or somebody who sells products. Well, again, and you may have come across this this idea on YouTube, but doing this in a more professional way, the unboxing. Yep. Yeah. What's in the box? What do you get? Because very few people actually ever tell you what's in the box, what you get. Um. So it doesn't matter what it is. It really literally doesn't matter what it is. You can, you can show people on a video a, an object that's for sale. Even if it's just that you put it on a turntable and you spin it round so that they can see all, all round of the object. It, it's a, it, again, it's experiential. It's pre-selling the object and it's answering questions. Z you're, Zappos you're, you're does dealing. something. Sorry, I was going to say Zappos does something yeah. very, very similar. It's not the unboxing per se, but it's a very raw, yeah. high, high definition video. But it's very raw in the the way it's edited and cut and scripted. That they have a staff member there on the screen picking up a shoe and talking about the shoe in the same sort of tonality, manner, descriptive words and flow that they would if they were in a retail store. They sort of, you know, this is Nike Structure's got medial density posting on the left-hand side of the shoe here. It's got a four-foot um, air pocket, blah, blah, blah. It sort of explains all the functions and features and benefits of the shoe in a very natural way as well. So it's not too scary. It's very, as we say again, engaging. Yeah, and you brought up another great example there, which is that you, if you already have staff who are trained to to follow a sales script something that we've talked about in the past um then they're great people they don't actually have to physically appear their face doesn't have to appear on the camera if they're not comfortable with that and i'll talk about that in a minute but but following that script doing the sales pitch as if a customer was really there as if they were in a physical store is a great use of video another little side effect of that by the way depending on what it is that you're that you're dealing with is that if if you have two things side by side, if you have all things being equal, you have a flat page with a, with our photograph or some photographs that requires scrolling and reading and all that, and you have a video, as a group experience, you're more likely to get people to, to, to sit together and experience a video together at the same time and share their emotion and share their feedback and engage with that video than you are for them to read the same page. If anybody's ever tried to show somebody else something on the web, the actual, the easiest thing it is to do to show somebody, whether it's on a screen or, and you know, again, another, another plus for video, whether it's on a mobile device, a video is one of those really shareable experiences. Yeah, well, think about, you know, another example that I was going to mention is the Tim Ferriss um, book trailer. When his Four Hour Body book came out, one of the key drivers that he feels that caused that book to hit the New York Times bestseller list was the book trailer. You know, from their, um, you know, attention to detail and, and, and analysis of the numbers and the data, that the biggest spike in book sales came directly after that book uh, trailer was released because it was, you know, very very engaging. It was, it was expensive video. It's a very very high quality, highly produced trailer. But the shareability of that was ridiculous. People sh shared the, sh the, the share out of it. They shared the share out of it. And uh, they... <laughs> I'm, trying not to, I'm trying not to swear on the show. Um, and, and that is... You're right. It's the shareability of that. People can easily you know, tweet it, Facebook it, whatever it might be. They're going to be more likely to do that than they are a big block of text. So Yeah, I, I, that, that's, that, that, that is, again, a good point and, and something that 
that people talk about when they talk about video is this this concept of a viral video, a video that you've sent the link on to your friend and got them to watch. I'm actually talking about something slightly more low tech, which is literally two people sat together in the same physical space and one person showing the other person so that they can maybe evaluate a product or evaluate service or evaluate a location, a hotel, a spa, you know, these real world businesses. Two people sat together can literally look at the same thing. But then we go on to this idea of the viral video. And where that comes from is literally that idea. Tim Ferriss is a good example. Another good example of that, uh, just getting away from what you can do, but speaking a little to some of those elephants in the room, is Dollar Shave Club. Absolutely. Dollar Shave Club. I, I love that video for, for the simple reason that it's crap. <laughs> It's awful. I mean, it's not. It's intentionally awful. Yeah, they've intentionally hammed it up and intentionally made a bad video. But it proves the point that you don't have to go to the to the extent that Tim Ferriss went to. I mean, he that was that was movie production quality. You know, the the, the different the editing and the, the the different scenes and all the different parts in that four hour body video. It deserved to be shared just as a piece of video let alone that it talks about the, the product and things like that. Um, Dollar Shave Club, awful video. Absolutely awful. Basically, it doesn't even show the product. In fact, if I remember rightly, it doesn't show the product. He, he holds a razor in his hand in one section of the video. Yeah. Um, but but amazing, because it, it's, it, it is a piece of media has become shareable. But, but it just gives you... They are two very good examples of, of the fact that you don't even though your product may not lend itself to video, or you don't think it does, there's still a way to use video to promote it, to support it, to inform people about it. Okay, I think that's yeah. the difference. I want to sort of make that really clear, is that Tim Ferriss's book trailer was a promotional video. So we've got the descriptive overview uh, video that Zappos use in their, in their shoes and things like that. We've got the promotional video which is designed to drive traffic somewhere, which is you know the Tim Ferriss approach with his book trailer. And then if you look at you know the third option we've discussed so far, the dollarshaveclub.com video. So if you haven't seen it, go to dollarshaveclub.com. It's really, really cool. And that video is a, a, an engagement tool, but it's also a sales tool. So that's a very funny sales video, which is what it's aimed to do. It's not meant to be necessarily to promote the brand because it's on their page where you purchase the product. So it's designed to actually get someone to actually make a purchase, and, and they've done it in a very humorous uh, and also viral way. You know, think about the same sort of TV commercials and, and obviously web-based uh, campaigning commercial. That uh, what was the cologne with? Oh, I've gone completely blank. I was going to say brute. It's not brute. It was. Oh, I'm looking completely full right now. What was it? What's awful is I know exactly what you're talking about as well, and I've forgotten as well. What brand was it? See, see, this, this is this is a big lesson right now too, guys, it, which is just advertising and marketing in general. Something going viral. Old Spice. Old Spice. Thank you very much. But this is a, this is a good point, and it's worth you know illustrating here. And I'd love to say that we just ham that up to sort of make the point, but unfortunately we didn't. But but the real thing is here is think about this huge viral campaign, but and in the form of Old Spice didn't make a huge dent to the actual bottom line of the business from the early research and reports that came out. You know, six months on, 12 months on, we can't recall what the actual ad was for. We recall the ad, but we don't recall what it was for. And this is, again, that sort of same mentality and question we were asking in last week's episode of, you know, what's the purpose? If the purpose is to actually just get a bit of brand awareness, great. Because when someone says Old Spice, I remember the video. But when I remember the video, I don't think Old Spice. So it's not necessarily going to help the hip pocket of the advertiser if they didn't get the right context or outcome uh, you know, put clearly defined when they started that campaign. So that's a perfect example of you know, not video gone wrong, but you know, the, the, the video lesson in, in that. Yeah, and, and that also speaks to the preneur hierarchy and this idea that's what we would call spray and pray advertising. Yeah, absolutely, exactly because right. Because you're... You're just trying to get brand brand exposure. So it even talks about, you know, when we talked about brand, it's not about the brand uh, mm. in, in a previous episode as well. And that, that's the you thing. Know. If you're trying to create a, vir- a video just to be viral for the sake of being viral, that's where you are. You're, you're spot on there, Dom. It's at the top of the pyramid. It's, it's, it's all about 
getting the people who wouldn't have thought about searching for you or who weren't actively searching for you or didn't realize they had a problem to solve. Uh, it's really about that screaming and that banner and uh, billboard style advertising, which, yeah, you get heaps of eyeballs, but if it doesn't equate to dollars in the bank, is it really an effective advertising campaign? Yeah. And and so let's let's flip that. Let's go to the other end of the pyramid. Because so far what we've talked about is promoting your business. And we the, I've I've also subliminally been talking about a very specific style of video. Because when we talk about video, when 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 I talk to video to people about video who who haven't really been involved in production, they have a very clear vision. Aha, uh-huh. he says using lots of visual terms. They have a very clear idea in their mind what video means. And what it means is what they're used to experiencing on a television, which is usually an image which moves with people and scenery and sets and normal everyday objects all moving around and interacting and things like that. It's what we call full motion video. Um, we, and, and, and it sounds like I'm over over overdoing this, but... The reason why I'm doing this is because people only have this one idea to produce video. Going back to the elephants in the room, to produce video, it costs a lot of money. You need a big, shiny, lots of equipment. It takes a long time, etc., etc., etc. But if we focus on the other end of the pyramid for a second and we talk about our existing customers, supporting our existing customers, helping them, informing them, etc., etc., there's a completely different type of video that you can use. And you mentioned it briefly at the beginning. It's something that we call screencasting. Now, a lot of people don't even know you can do this, and it seems like uh, voodoo when you, when you show them. But I can record, using a special program on my computer, I can record the whole of my computer screen. Everything that I do, everything that I can see on the screen, is recorded in a video file. Now, the uses for that are phenomenal. Every, every time I get a client inquiry about how I do something, how do I, how do I upload the video you've given me to my WordPress site? Uh, how do I do this? If my, one of my relatives or friends asks me a technical question, trying to explain that over the telephone is virtually impossible, to, especially to a non-technical person. But if I record a video of me doing that process step by step, save it, send it to them, they can watch it as many times as they want. They can follow it step by step, they can pause it, rewind it, watch it again. And it, it, it's just one of the most valuable ways of helping, assisting, and communicating with people that I've ever come across in those circumstances. And it's so, so simple. You start the recorder, you do what it is you want to show people, you can talk and it records your voice, and uh, you press stop and you send them the file. It, it's brilliant. And that's the thing is there's so many ways that you can apply that to your business. You know, for example, you know, at readitform.me forward slash preneurcast, we've got a screen capture video of inside the membership area. So, so listeners and other people can get a good feel of what they're going to experience when they actually get into that online digital membership area. You can use it. Exactly. Like, you know, we're going to test this very shortly with one of our websites, which is going to have quite a, a complex um, interactive mode or area of the site um, for a, a particular business that we're involved with. And we're going to actually test creating a, a almost like a how-to walkthrough video to explain, okay, now the next this is how you're going to actually need to do the next few things on this particular process of the website and actually use that as a educational walkthrough sales conversion hold your hand virtual salesperson type uh, solution that's that's and we're going to use that using the video of actually walking through the process and, to, and talking through it so someone gets a feel for what they're about to do uh, you can also do it for content you know for those of you who have um, you know been on various webinars that we've done or any sort of the coaching programs and membership sites that we have a lot of the content in there is screen captured video whether it be us walking through a website or using a particular piece of software or tool, but even to the extent of just you know, pre-doing a PowerPoint or keynote presentation and then recording that with audio, which is obviously one of the big things uh, and big focuses of what you do, Dom. So you're probably best to explain and talk about that particular use of screen capture. 
Absolutely. Um, the, the, the uses for screen capture as a, as a video production model are endless. Uh, and we're still talking at the moment, we're still talking about addressing, talking to clients and, and things like that. Um, and yeah, a very big use of video which I alluded to at the beginning, is, is communication, is information. And a very big and powerful product that, that you can produce and sell is an information product. And one of the easiest ways of producing an engaging, compelling, highly effective information product is to produce video. Now, a lot of people panic at that point. A lot of people panic. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this this whole panicking about the complexity, difficulty, cost, etc. of video. Um, but one of the one of the easiest ways to produce an information product is to produce a regular PowerPoint presentation using and then use screen casting, screen recording software to record you stepping through that presentation. Absolutely. Now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna break out of the the, the what I call the arm waving crowd. Okay, because video video attracts the arm waving crowd, and the arm waving crowd are people that stand at the front or produce content that says you can just do this, it's easy, off you go, just do this. Now with video, that's probably one of the one of the, the biggest biggest attractors of people that are that that wave their arm at the front in a in a grand gesture and then wander off because they can do it, so it must be easy, and they tell you it's easy and you believe them. Now, it isn't easy. It isn't totally fantastically simple across the board. There are technical things that it helps if you know, and that, you know that's why that's why I have a business producing media for people, because it, even with the best workflow in the world, it still takes time. You know, and, and I'll come back to workflows and things like that. But in terms of complexity, difficulty versus things that people can do, most people can use PowerPoint, and most people can talk their way through a PowerPoint presentation. So it's a great quick way to get an information product together. Um, so so that as a as either creating a product or creating communication is a is a great tip. But I think one of the things that I I began to talk about and I want to come back to. We've talked the last few weeks. We've talked a lot about sales. We've talked a lot about marketing. But this podcast isn't just about that it's about being in business it's about being an entrepreneur and one of the big things that we have talked about in the past is building a team having staff maybe outsourcing some of the work and we've, we've talked about that in specific episodes in the past and screen recording screen casting and producing step-by-step -step video instruction is one of the quickest and easiest and most efficient ways of educating a team. If you have a business that relies on any kind of computer-based process, rather than having to sit next to people and manually stepping them through step-by-step step, uh, or coaching them through the, the things, uh, or, or having to have them on the telephone and, them, and you saying, can you see this? And them saying, no, I can't see that, and so on and so on and so on. And so on. Or you even trying to write these instructions out, all those things take a lot of time and are not really repeatable. The, the last one, writing the instructions out, is repeatable, but it can be quite long-winded and difficult to do. Whereas if it's a process that you, know, you pretty much do every day yourself anyway, well, turn on the screen recorder, record yourself doing it, just talk out loud about what you're doing, and send them the file. So, and you, when we do this, sorry, I'm, I'm going to give some real-world examples of this. Maybe you have a, uh, a, an accounting software package that you need to be you know, inputting invoices in, AP invoices, AR invoices... Maybe there's some other sort of software that you have to do when you need to a, do a dispatch and you need to organize a courier. Any of those little tasks like that, they should all be recorded uh, and made in some sort of work wiki or some sort of system that you can keep that if staff move on, if someone's sick, they can jump in and do that role in the business, whether it might be to book a, booking something, filling something out, anything that's computer-based that your staff is, is doing. And that you know, is relevant to almost every business these days. On some level, every single company is using computer software to do some key element or elements and processes in the business. So this should be pre-recorded and screen captured so it's there on file for emergencies and use and training in the future as you grow and as staff come and go. It's a, it's a very applicable internal tool, which is what 
I know Dom's touching on, but this is something that's really, really important that so many people, when they think of video, just have those blinders on and think about it purely as a sales tool. Well, we're talking about it as just a process enhancement and system tool to get more efficient internally in your processes. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's to me, looking at it as a business, whatever your business is, these days, I guarantee you, as Pete gave some examples there, there's some elements of your business that are done either on a computer or online or both. Some people have businesses and that's all they do. You know, let's even even a person, let's say you have an outsourcer or you want to bring an outsourcer on because you are maintaining a blog. Yeah. Uh, or you're producing a podcast like we do. Um, there's a lot of repetitive, highly, highly, highly repetitive steps involved in producing any kind of digital media. They're highly repetitive steps. The standard same box has to be filled out with the same kind of information. And if you can reduce that to a video that says, take the information that I've told you is this title and put it in this box. Take the information I've told you is the description, put it in this box. Uh, click this button and check, look, look at the preview, Make test the links by clicking them, this should happen. Uh, when it's all done, press save, press publish, done. It literally takes you that long to create the training. That's it. In terms of leverage, which is a word that we use a lot, in terms of effective use of your time and the results that you get from the use of that time, it has to be one of the highest leverage mediums there is internally within your business. Um, and it's certainly one of the things I personally use video for most is, is for that for that reason. Hmm. A outside of the, the, the production that I do for my clients, my personal use of it is more oriented to improving and enhancing and automating my businesses than it is advertising and promoting them. Yeah, and that's what we're doing. We're doing a lot of that work wiki stuff. Uh, that I'm not sure if we've spoken about work wikis on the actual uh, Preneurcast before, so we might have to put that down as a future episode. But we do a lot of our work wiki stuff, which is just all about our internal uh, processes and, and, and documentation using video. It's, it's, it's really cool. And I, I thought I'd just um, mention to some, some people that I haven't, I haven't really promoted this much um, for, for quite a while, if, if at all, really, to be honest. Um, if you head over to youtube.com forward slash preneur videos, so that's youtube.com forward slash preneur videos, you'll actually see a whole bunch of videos that we've been quietly putting together in the background for some really cool stuff, which we'll reveal uh, later down the track. But you can get a bit of a preview of a whole bunch of stuff there that gives you a taste of these different types of videos. We've got a whole bunch of uh, you know PowerPoint keynote style presentations actually matched with the audio from our uh, podcast. So you actually get some visual versions of previous episodes of the podcast in a couple of different formats there, which are really, really cool. Um, you actually see a step-by-step uh, -step sales video of Audiobook Stitch, which is one of the new Mac OS X apps that we've released. You've got some really basic book trailer videos in there. You've got a, uh, a presentation or a webinar that I did that was recorded and uploaded. There's some uh, oh, a bunch of other face, you know, full motion video. So if you want to sort of get a feel for different types of videos, uh, definitely check out youtube.com forward slash preneur videos because you'll uh, see a great range of different ways you can use video in different ways and different elements and different processes to, uh, to market your business. And that is a really good example, actually. Thank you, Pete, for, for pointing that one out. Yeah, your your channel on YouTube is is fantastic as an example of the different kinds of video you can produce. And uh, there's there's a lot of stuff. Just to be clear, there's a lot of stuff on there, not only stuff that I've produced for Pete, but also that Pete's produced himself. You'll, you'll see you'll see the quality difference. Yeah, you'll see this. Got so over that. <laughs> um, and, and also that we've also had uh, an outsource team produce as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's different examples of the different levels of complexity and, and involvement in the process. So time's ticking on. I want to get to those elephants in the room, Pete. I think we've we've pretty much. I think people are pretty much convinced that there's a use in video for for pretty much everybody that's listening. Um, but uh, the the big things that stop people. I want to get I want to get these out of the way. Sure. Okay. Um, without without arm waving. Um, and the the first one is cost. Um, and cost is cost is slightly related to something else that I call shiny kit syndrome. 
because if you go and you look, if you first of all, let's let's take a common misconception. Video means you've got to be in front of the camera. Okay, let's take that out of the equation. You, as we've said and shown, you don't have to be on the camera. You can be recording your screen. Um, so so you don't have to be on the camera. Um, but shiny kit syndrome atta attached to the idea that you have to be on camera means that you go looking in the, the electronic stores for a camera, and if you walk into one, heaven forfend, somebody will sell you one that costs ooh, a lot of money, $500, $1,000, keep going. You know, the, the, the big boys use $15,000 cameras and plus. P television production companies, wow, they really use expensive gear. Um, but if you're recording your screen, you don't need a camera. Uh, you, if you have a Mac, uh, which if you're getting into media production, uh, not to sound like a fanboy, but if you're into media production, a Mac is the tool for the job. Uh, I'm not going to go into that anymore uh, on this particular episode, but it is. Uh, if you have a Mac, they actually have screen recording built in. Not a lot of people know that uh, as part of the standard software. It's it's not very powerful with its extra features, but it will record your screen. It will do the job. And that's that's free. That came with the machine. There you go. And and also, they have the, the, the built-in cameras as well with video recording software, again, out of the box. So if you want to sit in front of your camera and just talk to your Mac, you can have full motion video captured as well out of the box absolutely every every mac for the last quite a few years has had a, a a very high quality webcam but the latest ones have actually got high definition <laughs> webcams these things are ridiculous the quality of video they produce um and yeah you can record straight from that so out of the box on a mac you can press record and record your screen or record a camera so you can get your face in front of your audience if you want to do that um, and there's the free iMovie editing software on the Mac, so you can edit it, produce it, publish it, ship it, all in one box. Uh, so, ostensibly, if you invest in the machine, after you've invested in the editing machine, which you would have to do anyway, the production video cost is zero. Um, so, so there you go with your, it costs a lot of money. Um, but if you wanted to do live action, you want to move the camera around, you want to do product demos and things like that, um, I, I will I will be absolutely honest with the audience. I have been working with video for a great number of years now in very various capacities, uh, filming live events, filming sporting events, uh, doing all kinds of different video recording and production. Um, and my last, as I inverted commas call it, real camera um, was about, cost me about, I think, $1,200. And it was great camera, fantastic camera, high definition, whiz bang, really comes under the heading of shiny kit. Um, and I don't believe that it's actually been out of the bag for over two years now. All the live action work that I do is done on a $100 camera. It's fit for purpose. Canon Vado? No, actually, it's not a Creative Vado. It is a Kodak ZI8, sadly out of production now. Nice. Um, Kodak now do a Z, ZI10 or something else. Um, and I'm not going to go into the technical side of it. If anybody's really interested in technical stuff, drop us a line. Maybe we'll do, we'll do a more technical um, technical show. Um, but But trust me, it's not expensive. The only thing I will say, and I will get slightly technical about this, is that if you are looking at buying a camera... It should always, the only feature that's important after the fact that it records video is that you can plug in an external microphone. Because while the image on the screen is compelling, if the sound isn't up to scratch and is, isn't of high quality, then people will stop watching, trust me. YouTube, the entire YouTube infrastructure was built on awful quality visually, awful quality video. But if the sound was awful as well, they wouldn't have got very far. So if you're looking for a camera, look for one with an external microphone socket. But that's it. Yes, if you, I will be, again, open. You can hire me. I am for hire. My services are available. Uh, and no one has ever called me cheap or inexpensive. Uh, <laughs> but the people that hire me hire me to create information products and do things that are representative of their business, and they want a high-quality professional production quality. Hey, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you there for two seconds. You're, you're saying you, you keep referring to information products and I want to make it clear that I've used you to do some video stuff for our real-world real telco company. 
So it's not just about information marketers doing information products or anything like that. It's you know you can do some very very powerful marketing videos. Think about some of the commercials you see on TV these days. They don't actually have any live action stuff. It's just text, imagery, photos flying across the screen with a great soundtrack and movement. And that's the sort of stuff that you can do. So uh, I Absolutely. think we want to keep their mind open that you know if you have a, yeah. a dentist in Melbourne, you have got a rock climbing. Uh, studio in San Francisco or you're a roof tiler in South America there is some validity of using this sort of video that Dom can do for you yeah um, yes uh, I can do it and other, other video professionals can do it and and at the end of the day you know we've, we've talked about this briefly before you can do things yourself um, and and this brings me on to the other two the other two points one of them is quality um, and you have to decide what quality you want uh, and what is fit for purpose. Dollar Shave Club, classic example. Um, in terms of scripting, acting, etc., etc., rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. Intentionally rubbish, though. Um, the, the recording and the camera work and etc., etc., actually is very good. It's disguised as being rubbish, but it's very good. But you don't ha even have to go to that level. If, if you are doing a walkthrough of a dentist's uh, a dentist surgery, it's a walkthrough of a dentist surgery. If you're the dentist doing it, that adds more value than a professional cameraman with a, a trolley that keeps his camera stable and the, the lighting crew and the guy with the big pole with the microphone on it and all that malarkey. It doesn't, doesn't get the message across any better. And in fact, it's slightly less engaging. There's a lot, lot of value in the personality aspect of video production. So always look for the quality that's appropriate. By comparison, by the way, if somebody is paying you a few thousand dollars for an information product, you should really put a bit of effort into the production. Absolutely. You know, which, which, brings, us, which brings us to my last point, which is how hard is it? You know, and, and the, the, that, that to me is all about choosing the appropriate type of video and then the appropriate workflow in a previous episode pete and i've talked about our content leverage system the system that we have that means that, that pete's involvement in creating most of the videos for his information products is that he sits down with his ipad and creates an, a mind map and then records an audio track that's his involvement it, it gets the critical information from pete's mind into a format that it can then be enhanced and produced to the final product and, and myself and my team parts of Pete's team are involved in that process we have a workflow that means that that if if Pete wants to create an information product it, it, with for values of it's easy um, if you were to try and replicate one of those products yourself you would find it took you a lot of time because you're probably not an expert in the different pieces that need to be done but that is about choosing the right team, hiring the right people for the right jobs, outtasking the right parts, etc., etc. It's about the workflow. But at the other end of the scale, Pete's example of a rock climbing club or a dentist or any restaurant, all those things, we've talked about live action video. We've talked about screencasting video. But you can also make video just from photographs using various tools and pieces of software. So you don't even need to invest in high-powered equipment or, or even a new piece of equipment. Most people have a digital camera. Go out, snap some photographs of your climbing wall, your, your harness, safety harness equipment, uh, your changing rooms, and pop them together and make a video. It, it's a video. It's still a video. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, and it is. It's all about the workflow. It's all about choosing the right kind of video, choosing something that's appropriate to the audience, choosing the, the technology that's appropriate. Don't don't get caught up in this thing that I I, I have this phrase. We, it comes from a, a different world, but it, it applies here. It's all the gear and no idea. Oh yeah, a guy uh, yeah you know a guy with a fifteen thousand dollar camera can't necessarily produce any better video than me with my hundred dollar camera. You know, if you've got fifteen thousand dollars, if I were you, I wouldn't spend it on a camera necessarily. You might want to spend it on using somebody like me to produce an awful lot of high quality content for you. 
because I've already made the investment in the training and, and whatever else. Or you might want to just pay $100, go get yourself a little little portable HD camera and go whiz, whiz out a couple of quick videos. Give it a try. You know, low investment. Um, but I just... There is this, this huge mystique about the whole idea of video from everything that we've talked about this week, from everything from why should I use it, why should I, what use is it to me? Oh, I, I have no use for that. I don't. Or I don't want to be on camera or it must be expensive or it really, sounds really complicated and all these things. And hopefully, in a slightly rambling way, we've addressed some of that this week. Um, Pete, is there anything else on that, that you think maybe I didn't? Anything else you think people might have an issue with that I might not have covered there before I take a bit of a breather and talk about our last sponsor? No, look, man, I think you, you, you've done a brilliant job, you know, taking the reins and, and running with the episode today because this is definitely your domain. You are far more of an expert than I am uh, when it comes to video. Uh, and the really cool thing is we were talking before the show and um, the product that uh, I... Um, named i think the the best marketing product of 2010 i think it was from memory uh, is being being re-released and i don't really promote a lot of information marketing products uh these days and haven't done so really heavily for, for a year at least a year a lot of them are, are just uh uh subpar in my opinion that aren't worth a, a full get behind really endorsed promotion but um video boss by andy jenkins unquestionably is one of the the the, the better value fully developed, high quality, high content, high supported um, courses that uh, have been released recently. And uh, he's in the process of uh, re-releasing that at the moment as we record the show and will be available for a little bit after the show uh, goes to air uh, in its very first incarnation. And um, Dom's got a a fantastic um, supporting offer that uh, if you're interested in grabbing a copy of Video Boss and, and taking video serious in your business, this is a fantastic course, and it goes in depth in all the type of video that we spoke about. Um, but Dom's going to help support that with you to make sure you get the most of it in a, in a fantastic um, type package, aren't you, Dom? Yeah, and I just want to just to clarify. I mean, I am a media production professional. It's, it's one of the main businesses that, that I've been running for the last few years, um, and and. Not not only that, but but theoretically, I could go into the business of training people to do what I do. But when I came across Video Boss, I just don't see the need for me to sit down and go through all of the topics that we've talked about in the show, um, because Video Boss as a product is phenomenal. And this it has my wholehearted support, and this is this is a big thing for me because I'm not involved in the information marketing business as a producer. You know, it's not in my interest to be you know big pals with all these guys. Uh, really, uh, I produce things for other people. I pr- my clients produce information products at varying you know cost scales, but but for me, I just work with those people. I'm a supplier to them in that business. Um, but Video Boss is amazing. It, it really does address all the issues that we've talked about and, and goes into depth about some things even we haven't talked about, like things like script writing. Uh, there's an awesome module on script writing uh, about f- focusing your message, which is a valuable part. It's basically copywriting. And so that's a valuable part of any business communication. Um, and there's some great information in that. So I'm, I'm 100% behind Video Boss as a product. Um, for somebody who wants to get involved in video production, not necessarily actually physically doing it themselves, but wants to understand what it can do for them, wants to understand how to do it, the decisions that need to be made, and, and really just to be more informed about it. Um, and yeah, Pete, I, you know, you 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 came came and let the cat out of the bag, but I support it that much that. Um, I've got I've got a deal for you, uh, Preneurcast listeners, uh, fans of the show, as they say, um, because so, you know we've had a couple of emails over time. People want to work with me. People want me to supply services um, in a done it, done for you kind of way, and I'm I'm happy to do that. But if you think you want to do it yourself, um, and you want to you want to purchase the Video Boss product, if you purchase it through our our link that we'll provide in the show notes. 
I've, I'm going to support you. I will be on hand, um, and the details of this we're going to hammer out, but it's basically going to be um, some one-to-one -one strategy consulting and technical consulting with me. So you'll be able to go through the Video Boss product, and I will also give you some of my time in a one-to-one -one call to support you and, you know, as well as all the great support that goes on in Video Boss, if there's something about your business, uh, something, something you know, a bit more preneur related to do with video, I'm happy to, to get on a call with you one-to-one. -one. Uh, as I said, we're going to iron out the details. They'll be on the other end of the link. It's in the show notes. Um, but I also want to set up a little kind of mastermind group for our Video Boss people as well. Um, so there'll be regular mastermind calls involved in that as well. So follow the link that's in the show notes. Um, this is one of those take action things, uh, cause I don't know how long he's going to have the cart open for this time. He normally opens it for a while and then closes it cause they have a limit to the number of people they want to support in one go. Um, but if you go through our link, um, as I say, I will be there and I will be supporting the preneur listeners who uh, decide to sign up for video boss. Awesome. So preneurmedia.tv is where the show notes are. Uh, and we do really highly recommend you, you check out um, the, the blog post for this particular episode. Check out the link to, to what Dom's referring to because uh, it's very rare that he gives up his time uh, in a way like this. So uh, I highly recommend the course and you know invested in it myself and uh, have definitely used it quite a bit. So highly recommend Dom, obviously, and highly recommend Video Boss. But... Uh, more importantly, highly recommend you consider and start using video in one element, in one area of your business and your marketing. Definitely, and that's really the the, the take the takeaway for this show. Before we wrap up, let's have a quick quick chat because uh, we like to um, talk about useful things that we've come across. Uh, and Pete, what have you been? Uh, what have you been uh, consuming via Audible? Audible books this week. Uh, this week, I've been playing around and listening to um, the Facebook Effect, which is uh, a book recommended to me by Rob Somerville, uh, who's a, a good friend and fantastic marketer and uh, the real brains behind uh, the challenge. Let's let's be honest about it. Um, and uh, it's just a, it's sort of like you know in the Plex, uh, which is obviously the book about Google, and there's obviously um, the new uh, Inside Apple book, which talks about, and obviously the Steve Jobs autobiography that talks about Apple. And, you know, the third one of the big three is Facebook. And, uh, you know, uh, the Facebook effect really talks about how the Facebook um, started out as the Facebook uh, and how it grew and the decisions it made and the, the role it plays in society these days. So it's, it's kind of cool. So I um, highly recommend people checking out um, the, the Facebook effect in audio format. And uh, I was thinking a little bit during the show that as we um, have helped uh, brand and name uh, read it for me, we should probably do the same for, for Audible. So I was you know, thinking about something along the lines of you know, audible.com, the way authors wanted you to read their books or um, the way books should be consumed. Uh, I'm still trying to flesh that out. It's not quite as, uh, as catchy, as f efficient uh, and was it no, effective and engaging book summaries? But we'll get one for Audible in the next couple of weeks. We'll have to play around with that, and we'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do a slogan segment every show. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll work on that one offline. Um, but, folks, if you want to try out Audible, Audible Books, uh, we have a deal for you at audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Um, if you go to that link, you can sign up and get a free download token. Uh, um uh, for, as part of your membership, or free trial, sorry, and then, then membership of Audible. So audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Um, so yeah, just to wrap up this week's show, um, we, we as, as if you go to Pete's YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash preneur videos, uh, you'll see how much video plays a part in what Pete does in, in just communicating with our audience. Um you know, we, we as Pete said, we we are now videoifying the podcast as one example. But Pete uses video in all his businesses, both internally and externally. Um, if you've come across any of Pete's information products, uh, you'll you'll be aware of how much video is involved in those. Um, and just just look around. The action point for the for the week, I guess, is is look around and and look 
and think how video could be used in your organization, either internally or externally. Look at the ideas that we gave you for ways that regular bricks and mortar businesses, e-commerce businesses, um, and all kinds of businesses can use a different live action, photo-based or screencast video production to enhance either your external marketing, your existing customer support and communication, or your internal team communication. And if you are interested, yeah, if you are interested in uh, taking video to the next level, uh, obviously, as always, I'm available for hire. Drop us a line. Um, but if you want to, if you're thinking of uh, doing it yourself, taking it, taking it on uh, in your company, you want to know more about video. Uh, the best course we can recommend, the best information source we've got, is the Video Boss course, which is coming out soon, being re-released by Andy Jenkins. Um, and if you take advantage of uh, buying that, signing up for that through our link, which will be in the show notes. Uh, as I said, I'm going to put together a special package for preneur listeners um, where I'm going to be there to support you and give you some one-on-one coaching and consulting and I, I can't recommend that so I know I cut you off there mate but I'm just going to say I can't really recommend that highly enough because you know if you've been listening to the show for a while you definitely know how intelligent um, and you might not know how handsome he is but you'll definitely know how intelligent uh, <laughs> Dom is so um, you know getting that um, strategy applied to your business, but particularly in the, in the form of video, which is his you know, absolute specialty. It's, it's an amazing opportunity to sort of get, get Dom um, you know, focused and, and spending some time on your particular business and your particular projects when it comes to video marketing because you know, some of the big names um, in information marketing and some of the bigger businesses um, around you know, brands you'll probably know have used Dom in, in this sort of area. So to get access to him is, uh, is very, very effective at the moment. So uh, definitely, uh, if you can, you know, even if you don't want the product, buy it just so you get access to Dom. <laughs> I, to, odd, oddly enough, um, yeah, if, I, I would say that the package that I'm planning to put together, um, it, you're either getting me for free or you're getting Video Boss for free um, with the price that Video Boss is going at at the moment. So uh, I'd like to think that I'm, I'm offering a good deal, but thank you for your kind words, Pete. Um, <laughs> justified words, mate, justified. Thank you kindly. Um, we're going a little bit over time. Hopefully, people have found value in this one, and we've we've busted a few more myths without the silly moustache and hat. Um, please give us some feedback. Pop, pop us a, a review on iTunes. Pop over to preneurmedia.tv and and get all the different show notes and information there, and drop us some comments. Thanks to everybody that does comment. We do read it, and we do take it on board. Um, so thanks for the great feedback you have given us, and uh, keep on giving us feedback. And we will see you next week for episode 52 our Woo! one year one anniversary year. one year anniversary do I have to buy you diamonds or paper or something uh, What's one, is one year anniversary paper I don't know you're the married guy better work it out soon I don't know, I've, got, no, I've got 11 months <laughs> see you next week ciao been enjoying another fine episode of PrinterCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at printermedia.tv or drop them a line via PrinterCast at printergroup.com.